What if I told you that there was a disease out there that was killing over 120,000 Australians every year? That's like a Qantas flight from Melbourne to Sydney crashing to the ground every single day. And all the while, another 100,000 people all around the world are suffering the same fate. Well, the cause of death of those people is the aging process itself. You see, the aging process causes Alzheimer's and heart disease and cancer, and it leads to over two thirds of all deaths all around the world. But in the foreseeable future, we might be able to treat the aging process just as we treat common diseases today. My name is Peter Zing. I'm a tech and innovation manager in KPMG, and I'm also an advocate for research and healthy life extension. I identify and drive a global movement called transhumanism. And transhumanism is about how do we use science and technology to increase our healthy lifespans, to integrate with artificial intelligence to enhance our own intelligence, and how do we actually achieve greater happiness and well being through science and technology. And today, I'll be going through some of the latest breakthroughs in some of the healthy life extension tech. When we think about the aging process, we normally think, well, it's a normal way of life. You're born, you grow up, you might have some kids, but then you're just meant to pass away, grow old and pass away. But from a scientific perspective, the aging process is just a biological process, unlike anything else that follows the laws of physics. You see, The cells in our bodies, they're made up of molecules, and those molecules are made up of atoms, and everything in the universe is made up of atoms. You see, the way that these cells replicate is that it just continues to duplicate again and again. Kind of like a photocopying machine. You know, you're, you're taking one document, feeding that through to the photocopying machine, and then using that copy to create another copy. I mean, that's fine at the start, but over time, things just lose. Fidelity. And it's the same with our cells, in particular the stem cells being the building blocks of life and contain the genetic and mechanical blueprints for everything in our bodies. One area of research that's looking at how do we actually remove these bad copies that are being created、uh, is in senescent cells. So, senescent cells are the ones that have created, been replicated so many times that, from a biological perspective, they're pretty much done, right? They're actually now harming the tissue. Around them. And over time, as we age, the number and proportion of them continue to grow. So it's a pretty good idea just to see if we can remove them, right? Well, in 2017, a team of scientists in the Netherlands actually conducted research on mice. They genetically engineered the mice so that it was easy to remove these senescent cells. What they found was that the older mice that had these senescent cells removed actually were more active, they, had, they were less prone to cancer. And their hearts and their kidneys were performing better. Subsequent studies also showed the same results. And they even demonstrated that even being, these mice being more active, they were demonstrating a regrowth in hair. So, not surprisingly, the companies that are looking to treat the aging process itself i s also looking to target these senescent cells for the benefit of everyone in the market. And、uh, what they found was that、um, over time, this is actually a commercially viable. For the greater community. Now, another area of research looking at extending the healthy human lifespan is looking at a coenzyme called NAD. So, when we're referring back to the photocopying machine, NAD is essentially sort of something that helps our cells take better care of themselves. So, it's fixing up the photocopying machine, essentially.、And、cell replication is pretty messy stuff. You know, you, when a cell's been replicated, a cell is created. It needs to destroy the old cell. It needs to actually clean it up and then rebuild it back together. And over time, at age 50, we have half as much NAD in our bodies as we do at age 20. Low amounts of NAD h a s been linked to skin cancer, Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, and multiple sclerosis. So, scientists are looking to uplift the number of NAD levels in our bodies. In 2016, researchers at the UNSW in Australia and also in the US and Harvard have actually conducted research again on mice by lifting up their NAD levels. What they found was also rejuvenating these mice, they, the mice actually were able to repair their DNA better and they were less prone to cancer. 
So NASA is also interested in this because based on the radiation damage that's caused to astronauts, NAD plus levels will actually boost the astronaut's defense mechanisms against DNA damage and helping the body repair in that sense. So multiple applications in there. Beyond senescent cells and NAD+, there's a raft of other technologies that are helping to increase, looking to increase the healthy human lifespan. There's drugs like metformin, which are taken by diabetics, which has been shown to increase the healthy lifespan of mice, again, by 30 to 40 percent. Another drug, rapamycin, is achieving the same thing. And they're looking to start human trials already. Now, at this rate, it seems like the mice are the ones that are going to be living forever, right? I mean, come on, what's some of us for us? But you see, there's also other technologies to help us in the meantime. We've also seen that we can have organs that are grown in labs, and uh, the recent research conducted by scientists in the US have grown the lungs of pigs outside the pig itself in doing these lab-grown implants and replanting that back into the pig. So it's great news for the smokers out there, but right now it's only limited in terms of the applications for animals. We're also seeing stem cell research. So this is actually looking to inject stem cells to repair the body function itself. And uh, now you're actually able to personalize your stem cells and uh, turn them from fat cells into your own stem cells. So soon we could be replacing our waistlines and exchanging that for more lifelines. What we're also seeing, the amazing breakthroughs in CRISPR. So CRISPR is the latest breakthrough in gene editing, and it's essentially the cut and paste tool for our DNA. Back onto the photocopying example, it's almost as if you can have a digital copy of that document and being able to edit that document and making that printing multiple times again. Now, scientists are using, the, uh, to, using CRISPR to treat a variant of genetic disorders, but Hollywood is already taking it a step further. I mean, in the latest blockbuster starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson uh, called Rampage, you see, you know, the CRISPR technology is not as a cure for these genetic diseases or a way to extend the healthy human lifespan or treat other disease. No, it turned a gorilla into a knockoff version of King Kong. So this is how the West is viewing all these mad scientists you know, in being developing these things. But while the West debates the ethics of the use of CRISPR on, on humans, China has already done human trials on at least 86 people, on 86 patients since 2015. And they've been looking to treat a variety of diseases, uh, a variety of cancers and HIV and leukemia. Soon enough, it wouldn't be surprising to see that we're going to have designer babies made to order, clear of all any, any genetic disorders, with all the healthy lifespan you want, and with optional upgrades, right? You could have babies that are better looking when they grow up, or they could have stronger bodies, or they could even be, have greater intelligence uh, or even more desirable social skills. So, you know, it wouldn't be surprising to see big companies come in like Louis Vuitton or Gucci, right, being able to create these proprietary designs for these babies uh, and servicing a premium market. This is what we're facing today. The next emerging tech. What we see, all these technologies are heading towards what many are calling longevity escape velocity. So this is where there's a point in time where for every year that you age, you essentially get a year back. And in the meantime, the message is, please don't die from anything stupid. There's going to be a raft of technologies that are mitigating the ways, the dumb ways to die. And you can see sort of initially these uh, things that monitor your health. It could be as simple as a Fitbit, or it could be integral part of your body, such as a pacemaker. We're also seeing uh, things like prosthetics helping Olympians essentially perform better than traditional Olympians in the Paralympics. And they have gone from a disability into something that's giving them an advantage. It's the same with cochlear implants, because uh, initially they were used to help the disabled hear up to 60% of conversations, and then 70%. And now they can hear just as well as normal people. But the next generation of cochlear implants will enable people to actually hear the other side of the room in conversations, or to be able to take phone calls, or to do real-time translation in a foreign country. And what it's going to do is going to augment our intelligence with things like recognizing the voice of the person that's talking to you, if you don't remember their names. 
and it's going to even able to enable them to hear the sound waves of what dogs and dolphins could hear. And we haven't even gone into what smart devices are going to do for our vision. And you've already seen the amazing performances by Jess uh, earlier today, and what the future of music performance could be like too. So all these technologies are one day going to head towards what perhaps may be reading signals coming out of our brain. Now, science is already working on this, and there's research conducted by Facebook and the likes of the Elon Musk companies, such as、uh, Neuralink and Kernel. But these are all sort of trying to map the signals in our brain to create an extension of it in real time and uploading that into the cloud. So this is one of the more far-fetched of ideas of uploading our minds into the cloud. So we may be already transhuman, because if you think about the technology you're using today. When someone asks you, you know, a question that you don't know of, you could just use Google and search that online. We're already using tapping into the collective intelligence of all of human history, and it's the same with our longevity. Right? I mean, 50,000 years ago, humans died very young. The average age was roughly 30. But as we use the resources around us, we're actually increasing our healthy lifespans. But it comes as an、uh, unforeseen consequence. Because as we age, the more prone, we're,、uh, prone we are to age-related diseases. The best way to prevent these diseases is to find the,、uh, the, the process of aging itself.、Right? So if we focus on the aging process, we may be able to prevent all of those people that are dying in two-thirds of the country. So, but what would a world without aging look like?、Um, You know, many have, have seen some of the novel adaptations of、uh, this altered, altered carbon, and also the Netflix adaptation、uh, on Netflix. Will we just be Netflix and chilling in our future? Right? Essentially, what else are we going to do with our lives? This particular Netflix is actually exploring some of the themes, the dark side of what the technology could bring about. For example, what would it mean for relationships? You know, if you have a lover who forever chases a loved one that no longer loves them back. You know, it's in Into the future, infinity is a very long time,、uh, and explores some other dark sides of technologies of being. You know, would the rich only have access to effective immortality? The wealthy in in altered carbon have the ability to upload their mind and do backups in real time through satellites and uploading their minds in the cloud. Whereas the rest of society are not、um, are not having that access and are living in a suboptimal means of existence. So, what would you do? I mean, if your love, you and your loved one, have an extra 100 or 200 healthy years, right? What would that mean? What would it mean for your careers? If you could work for another 150 years, would you spend more time figuring out what you're good at, or would you spend some more time learning? What would it mean for us taking care of the planet if we actually worried about climate change because we actually be around there in that place in the first place? Or would we spend our time exploring the universe, traveling from one solar system to another, in our digital immortality? This is the sort of future that、um, is really exciting for me. And if you think about, as a society, we've gone from single-cell organisms for life into multicellular organisms, and now we're sort of connected on this, in,、uh, on this connected intelligence and technology that we're forming a, a meta intelligence, and this could be the future of life. As we know it, but I'll leave you with one key message: is that all around the world, there's a hundred thousand people dying every single day. That's roughly one every second. So, that's another life. That's another life. And we only live about thirty thousand days, on average, without the advancements of science and technology. Now, leading researchers have said that. We may have a 50/50 chance of being the last generation to ever die involuntarily, and I can't think of any greater purpose than to nudge those chances in our favour and giving that option for us to go into the future. Thank you very much.